the realm. Do you know what the realm is? It's the thousand blades of Aegon's enemies. A story we agree to tell each other over and over till we forget that it's a lie. What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another Game of Thrones Season 8 Theory video. Hopefully by this time all of you had the chance to watch the brand new teaser HBO uploaded to promote their final season of Game of Thrones. In the new teaser, we can see Jon Snow, Arya Stark, and Sansa Stark down in the crypts below Winterfell. And after this came out, I did make a video where I gave my initial thoughts on the new teaser. What I want to do today is dive a little deeper into the mysterious crypts of Winterfell. Since HBO did dedicate an entire teaser to this specific location under Winterfell, I have a very good feeling it has some sort of connection to the endgame of the series. This is something I have said in a few of my previous videos before. Thanks to the new teaser, I thought that since the Crypts of Winterfell were fresh in everyone's minds, this would be a good time to talk about some of the other theories surrounding the mysterious section of the Stark's castle. Now, when it comes to the Stark's underground cemetery, this is a place that has always been shrouded in mystery, but some of their deepest and darkest secrets could come to light by the end of the final season. So, everyone go and make sure you grab yourself a candle, because I want to head down into the Crypts of Winterfell where we last saw Jon, Sansa, and Arya as they were getting ready to defend themselves from an attack by the Night King. For those of you that don't know, one of my favorite aspects of A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones mostly involves things that are taking place in the North. There is something about the history of House Stark and the White Walkers that has always fascinated me the most. As I have said time and time again, I believe the Starks and the Night King have a connection to each other that dates all the way back to the Age of Heroes. This is when the White Walkers were first created and how Stark was founded. I also tend to believe that the Crypts of Winterfell, which lie below the castle, are another piece of the puzzle that helped connect the Night King and how Stark. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I did mention some of this stuff in my teaser breakdown video, but now I want to take the time to go into the details a little bit more. At the very beginning of Game of Thrones Season 8, we will get an opening scene at Winterfell with the arrival of Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen. This will be the first time all of the Stark children are in the same location since the very first season of the show. I'm assuming that most of us are excited to see all the Starks together again, but what makes it even more interesting is the fact that Daenerys Targaryen's dragons will be in Winterfell as well. One thing we have learned is that the dragons actually intensify the magic throughout Westeros. There is even a quote that says, when the last dragon died, the magic in Westeros started to fade away as well. Now that the dragons are back, the magic has started to come back as well. And when the dragons are in the north, their presence alone could awaken something within the Crypts of Winterfell. Like I said earlier, the Crypts of Winterfell has always been shrouded in mystery. We still don't know who or what is down there in the lowest levels, but whatever it is could awaken or be found very, very soon. We do know that the members of House Stark who grew up in Winterfell have some sort of mystical or magical connection to their crypts below the castle. If you have read the books, you would also know that the author has left these breadcrumbs throughout each book that continue to tell us how special of a place this is for House Stark. I don't think it's just because this is where they keep their loved ones after they pass. I believe there is a much bigger secret down there just waiting to get revealed. This could happen in one of the last books, but I am curious about whether or not this will get revealed in the final season of the television show. Now that HBO has released a new teaser based solely on the Crypts of Winterfell, I think the chances of that happening just dramatically increased. Another one of the biggest mysteries of A Song of Ice and Fire was the true identity of Jon Snow's mother. This is something that was set up all the way back in the very first season. What has made this even more interesting is the fact that Jon's mother has been hiding right under his nose the entire time, because she has been kept down in the Crypts of Winterfell ever since she died after giving birth to Jon. This creates a connection between Jon Snow's parents and the Crypts of Winterfell. We get clues about both mysteries during some of Jon Snow's dreams. In one of these dreams, Jon was wandering the empty castle, searching for his father, descending into the crypts. Only this time, the dream had gone further than before. In the dark, he'd heard the scrape of stone on stone. When he turned, he saw that the vaults were opening, one after the other, as the dead kings came stumbling from their cold black graves. I find this dream to be fascinating because it gives us clues about several different things. The first thing it does is show the connection between the Crypts of Winterfell and Jon Snow's parents, as I said before. Jon cannot find his father down there because Jon's actual father is not a member from House Stark. As we all know, Jon's father is Rhaegar Targaryen. Now what's interesting about this dream is it says, Jon had gone further than before. This means that Jon is searching in some of those lower levels, where I believe something is hiding. 
where most likely one of the Stark's deepest and darkest secrets is kept. There has to be a reason why we learn about the different levels below Winterfell, because I believe we will eventually see a character go down there and find something maybe they wish they hadn't. When I made my teaser breakdown video just a few nights ago, I told you there were some hints in the books about the Kings of Winter rising from the dead. One of those clues is in this dream that John is having right here. As you can see, it says, when he turned, he saw that the vaults were opening, one after the other, as the dead kings came stumbling from their cold black graves. In that new teaser, when we see John, Sansa, and Arya standing near their own statues, we begin to see the cold air or mist entering the crypts. My first initial thought was this is the Night King coming to get them, but I also thought that it could be those kings of winter coming back alive. What if those dead kings do come stumbling from their cold black graves? What if this cold air or mist is actually coming out of their statues as they begin to awaken? John has another very interesting dream where we get some more clues. This time, John dreams that he was back in Winterfell, limping past the stone kings on their thrones. Their gray granite eyes turned to follow him as he passed, and their gray granite fingers tightened on the hilts of their rusted swords upon their laps. You are no Stark, he could hear them mutter, in heavy granite voices. There is no place for you here. Go away. He walked deeper into the darkness. Alright, now let's break this down. Once again, we get another clue about John's parents. When John goes down here, he can hear them saying that he's not a Stark. They say, there is no place for you here. Go away. We later come to find out why they would be saying something like this to John. At first, we might think it's because he's a bastard, and bastards do not get put down into the crypts of Winterfell. However, this is not the only reason why Jon would not have a place down there. That's because Jon is a Targaryen, a legitimate Targaryen who is next in line for the Iron Throne. Another thing that Jon does in the dream is he continues to go deeper into the darkness, down into those lower levels I talked about before. Something is down there that is calling out to John to come and find out whatever it is. We also get more references to those Kings of Winter coming alive again. In this dream, their eyes are following John as he walks past them. Their fingers are also getting tighter around the hilts of their swords. They are even speaking out to John by telling him that he doesn't belong down there. It's almost as if they're getting angry at John for even visiting their final resting place. It almost sounds like they want to fight, because they are beginning to grab their swords from their laps. One other thing that I noticed is it also appears as if John has some sort of injury during that dream. It says that John is walking with a limp. He is limping past the Stone Kings on their thrones. This makes me wonder if John will suffer some sort of injury during the big battle, which in turn causes him to run down into the Crypts of Winterfell for some reason. Maybe he goes down there to hide, or find some special weapon, or perhaps something that has to do with these dead kings waking up. Like I said, there has to be some sort of significance to HBO releasing a teaser that featured John down here in the Crypts of Winterfell. What intrigued me the most about that teaser is how it gave us a clue about the connection between the Night King and the Crypts of Winterfell. There has to be a really good reason why they would show the Night King's cold air creeping into that location. I know that whenever I think about the Night King, two things always come to my mind. What does the Night King symbolize? Well, one thing you could say he symbolizes is death, but another thing I directly relate to him is winter. He comes from the lands of always winter after all, and he also brings the winter storm wherever he goes. We can even see that winter air coming into the crypts of Winterfell. The oldest statues that are kept down there are known as the Kings of Winter, but you could also say that the Night King is a King of Winter. In fact, I would say he is THE King of Winter. When I made my teaser breakdown video, I talked about what could possibly be kept down there below Winterfell. I briefly talked about how the original Night's Queen or Night's King could be locked up down there in the lowest levels. Well, what I want to do now is go into some more of the details about why I think that is possible. Let's get into some of the actual evidence from the text. In order for me to do so, we need to go all the way back to the Age of Heroes. This is around the time that the White Walkers were created, but this is also when Winterfell was built and how Stark was founded. Now, according to the legend, Winterfell was built by Brandon the Builder, who was aided by giants, after the Long Night ended 8,000 years ago. Let's dissect that small piece of information right there. So, as we all know, the Long Night started when the White Walkers came for the first time. We learn about this during one of Old Nan's bedtime stories. Fear is for the Long Night, when the sun hides for years and children are born and live and die, all in darkness. That is the time for fear, my little lord, when the White Walkers move through the woods. 
things get so bad that it actually appears as if the White Walkers are going to completely overrun Westeros. This is when we hear the legend about someone known as the Last Hero. With the help of the Children of the Forest, the Last Hero is able to somehow stop the White Walkers from advancing any further south. This leads to the White Walkers running back into the north. And after the White Walkers return to the Lands of Always Winter, this is when Brandon the Builder raises the Wall with the help of the Giants and the Children of the Forest. After Brandon the Builder raises the Wall to keep the White Walkers out of Westeros, he then constructs a second line of defense. This is when he builds Winterfell, but before he raises the castle, he first builds the Crypts of Winterfell. Now think about what that legend actually tells us. After the generation-long winter known as the Long Night comes to an end, Brandon builds another stronghold for his descendants. He doesn't just build them a place to live. It says he builds them a stronghold, which is basically a fortress. This is in case the White Walkers ever come back and are able to get past the wall. If they're able to do that, then the Starks would need another location in the north to help them defend Westeros. This is why Winterfell was built, but since he built the Crypts of Winterfell first, right after the Long Night ended, who could he have possibly put down there underground at that time? Who are these original Kings of Winter? Well, let's take a look at a few quotes that describe these old statues under Winterfell. The crypts beneath Winterfell are located below Winterfell, and they contain the tombs of the members of House Stark. The cavernous vault is larger than Winterfell itself, with older Starks buried in deeper and darker levels. The lowest level is said to be partly collapsed, and the statues have large stone direwolves curled at their feet. According to tradition, iron longswords lay across each lord's lap to keep the vengeful spirits within the crypts. Now take a look at that very last sentence describing what they do to the statues. Ever since the very first King of Winter was put below Winterfell, they have added large stone direwolves curled at their feet, and they place iron longswords across their laps to keep the vengeful spirits within the crypts. This tradition could have started to help keep the first Night King or White Walker as a prisoner down there. I find it very interesting that the Starks have been attempting to keep the vengeful spirits locked up in their crypts by using iron longswords placed across their laps. You know what else is made out of iron down here in the crypts? The Crypt's Ironwood Door, which is located in the oldest section of Winterfell near the First Keep. It sounds like that Ironwood Door has been there ever since the crypts were built into the ground. That's why the door is located in the oldest section of Winterfell near the First Keep. So, now we know they use iron longswords to keep the spirits within their statues, but if they ever get out of their statues, they have added a second layer of protection by making the door out of iron wood. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. What does iron have to do with keeping the Night King or the White Walkers locked away? Have we ever been told that the White Walkers do not like iron? Well, yes. Yes, we have. Old Nan also told us that they hated iron. Let's take a look at the quote. Old Nan nodded. In that darkness, the others came for the first time. She said as her needles went click, click, click. They were cold things, dead things, that hated iron and fire and the touch of the sun, and every creature with hot blood in its veins. When Jon Snow is at the wall, he tells the exact same story Old Nan told the Bran. He even mentions how the White Walkers hate iron. Now I know I can't be the only one who finds that to be very interesting. Winterfell, along with the Crypts of Winterfell, were built right after the Long Night ended, at a time in which the White Walkers were very active. When Old Nan tells the story about the Long Night and the others coming for the first time, she says they only hate a few things at that time. They hated fire, the sun, and iron. Now could it really be a coincidence that the Starks are using iron longswords and an iron door in their crypts to keep those spirits locked up? I think they are doing that because they are scared of what would happen if they ever got out. We do know that the Starks keep their loved ones down there, but when the castle was originally built, I believe they were keeping some other things down there as well. I think that the crypts of Winterfell were originally built to be a prison for the dead. Why do you think Jon Snow's dreams of the dead kings stumbling out of their statues are so terrifying? That's because of who these dead kings of winter actually are. Now, if you remember in my teaser breakdown video, then you should remember a quote that I referenced about the kings of winter. In the very first book of Game of Thrones, Ned Stark has a dream where he is walking through the crypts of Winterfell, and we get two very important clues during that dream. During Ned's dream, it says he was walking through the crypts beneath Winterfell, as he had walked a thousand times before. The Kings of Winter watched him pass with eyes of ice. When it says the Kings of Winter are watching Ned as he walks past them, this is another reference to them actually coming alive. 
but as I said in my last video, the description of their eyes really stand out to me. Now let's take a look at another quote that describes what the White Walker's eyes actually look like, because it sounds exactly like what Ned sees during that dream. We get this description at the very beginning of the story, when the White Walkers are first introduced in the prologue or the pilot episode. Will saw its eyes, blue, deeper and bluer than any human's eyes, a blue that burned like ice. So, now we know the Kings of Winter have eyes of ice just like the White Walkers. This makes me wonder who or what is actually inside of those statues. Why are all the dreams of the Crypts of Winterfell so damn ominous or foreboding? We have heard the White Walkers have eyes of ice, and we have heard that the statues have eyes of ice, but do we know of any Starks that had eyes of ice? Now let me show you another quote that I think creates a connection between the two. In a Davos chapter, we do learn about a Stark who was a king during a very long winter. This Stark doesn't sound anything like the Starks that we know today. In fact, I don't think you would ever want to meet this Stark. Make sure you pay very close attention to each word that is used in the paragraph. A long cruel winter fell, the white knife froze hard, and even the firth was icing up. The winds came howling from the north and drove them slavers inside to huddle round their fires. And while they warmed themselves, the new king come down on them. Brandon Stark this was, Edric Snowbeard's great-grandson, him that men called Ice Eyes. He took the wolf's den back, stripped the slavers naked, and he gave them to the slaves that he'd found chained up in the dungeons. It said they hung their entrails in the branches of the heart tree, as an offering to the gods. The old gods, not these new ones from the south. Your seven don't know winter, and winter don't know them. Now I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like your typical Stark. It says this Stark was named Brandon Stark, but the men called him Ice Eyes. It also sounds like he rode down on the winds of winter, during a long winter that fell. It also said he was a new king. It doesn't say he was king in the north, or even a king of winter. It just says new king. So maybe, just maybe, he was the new night king, riding down on the winds of winter to take the wolf's den back, and have those slavers' entrails hung up in the weirwood tree as an offering to the old gods. The Starks that we know don't do shit like this, unless this particular Stark known as Ice Eyes just so happened to cross over to the other side. And by the other side, I am of course referring to the White Walker's side. So perhaps these are the eyes of ice that Ned dreams about when he's walking around in the crypts of Winterfell. And, when we see that cold air creeping into the crypts in the new teaser, maybe this is the man that could come stumbling out of one of those statues that Jon always dreamed about. Let's continue. Another thing that I find very interesting is this isn't the only Brandon Stark who would have had eyes of ice. Old Nan tells us a second story about another character known as Brandon Stark, but this time we know that he ends up working for the side of the White Walkers, and there is a very good chance that he was locked up in the crypts of Winterfell after he was slain. The reason I believe the Night's King was brought back to Winterfell is because he was killed by his own brother, who just so happened to be the Stark of Winterfell at that time. As we all know, the Starks do not burn their ancestors, they take them down into the crypts of Winterfell. Therefore, the Night's King should still be down there. Let's take a look at Old Nan's story just in case some of you haven't read it before. Old Nan said, He had been the thirteenth man to lead the Night's Watch. A woman was his downfall, a woman glimpsed from atop the wall, with skin as white as the moon and eyes like blue stars. Fearing nothing, he chased her and caught her and loved her, though her skin was cold as ice, and when he gave his seed to her, he gave his soul as well. Alright, so let's break this part of the story down first. As you can see, this story takes place roughly 8,000 years ago. This was shortly after the wall was constructed. After all, this Brandon Stark was only the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, so this isn't too long after the Night's Watch was created. If you remember, Right before Jon Snow joined the Night's Watch, Ned Stark told him that the Wall had been manned by Starks for thousands of years. It was great honor serving in the Night's Watch. The Starks have manned the Wall for thousands of years. I happen to think that this is for the same reason why a Stark must always remain in Winterfell. You see, Winterfell and the Wall was built by a Stark known as Brandon the Builder. As I said before, these two structures were built to help defend against an attack by the White Walkers. Since Brandon the Builder made Winterfell and the Wall, I believe he left his own family members in charge of guarding them. Now we obviously know a Stark was left in Winterfell because that is where their house was founded, 
but I also believe the very first Lord Commander of the Night's Watch was a Stark as well. There always needs to be a Stark at the Wall, just like there always needs to be a Stark in Winterfell. This is another reason why House Stark has always had a close connection to the White Walkers. But once Brandon Stark became the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, things started to change. This is when the White Walkers attempted to seduce Brandon Stark by sending a female White Walker that was unresistible. This is kind of similar to what happened to Jon Snow. Jon was never supposed to fall in love with the woman that lived on the other side of the wall, but he couldn't help himself, just like the 13th Lord Commander, only this time things would play out a little differently. He brought the female White Walker back to the Night Fort, and he proclaimed her a queen and himself her king. And with some kind of sorceries, he was able to bound his sworn brothers to his will. For 13 years, they had ruled Night's King and his corpse queen, till finally the Stark of Winterfell and Joramin of the Wildlings had joined to free the Watch from bondage. After his fall, when it was found that he had been sacrificing to the others, all records of the Night's King had been destroyed, his very name forbidden. But Old Nan said he was a Stark, the brother of the man who brought him down. He was a Stark of Winterfell, and who can say? Mayhaps his name was Brandon. Mayhaps he slept in this very bed, in this very room. So as you can see, this is another reference to a person named Brandon Stark who would have had eyes of ice. This story tells us that the Night's King was killed by his own brother, who was a Stark of Winterfell at the time. Now what do you think he would have done with his brother's body? Like I said, the Starks don't burn their family members. We know where they put their loved ones, even if they are thought to be evil. This is why the Starks begun the tradition of placing iron longswords across the laps of the statues. That way the spirits do not get out. Old Nan told us that the White Walkers hated iron, so as long as the iron is still there, then the spirits should not be able to get out. However, there is one problem. These iron swords have been rusting away for quite some time. Let's take a look at one more quote. This quote could explain what is happening in that teaser, when we see the cold air coming into the crypts of Winterfell. Now I know that it certainly could mean that the Night King is getting very close to Winterfell, but it could also mean that something is waking up down in the crypts. This is what was said in one of the very first chapters of the books, and it looks like it could possibly come true in one of the last chapters of the story. By ancient custom, an iron longsword had been laid across the lap of each who had been Lord of Winterfell to keep the vengeful spirits in their crypts. The oldest had long ago rusted away to nothing, leaving only a few red stains where the metal had rested on stone. Ned wondered if that meant those ghosts were free to roam the castle now. He hoped not.